morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we enter into this sacred celebration, we call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon, peace, healing, restoration. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and what praiseworthy service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross, of Christ. I have often told of you of them, and now I tell you, even with tears, their end is destruction, their God is the belly, their glory is in their shame, their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, and that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord. In this way, my beloved, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. As was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord, for there, for there the thrones of for judgment were set up, the thrones of the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So the rich man summoned the manager and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now, that my master is taking the position away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig, I am ashamed to beg, I have decided what I do, so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me to their homes. <coughs> so summoning his master's debtors, one by one he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? He answered, a hundred jugs of oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it fifty. Then he asked another, 
And how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A few of us have been walking through for the first time uh, a program called Following Christ uh, by Christ Life. Uh, Dave Nodar and his team developed this. Uh, there's the Encountering Christ, Following Christ, and Proclaiming Christ as a Catholic uh, process of just being discipled and, and learning how to be a disciple. Last evening, we uh, went through forgiveness as an important element in uh, being a disciple. So the first evening was on prayer, the second was on scripture, the third was on the sacraments of Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation. And as we walked through the evening, it was interesting because we paused after the talk that was given. We were invited to uh, ask God's forgiveness on those who have hurt us, those who have sinned against us, those who have, uh, that we, we are called to mind uh, that, you know, we've had difficulty with. And the whole process of calling them to mind, naming them by name, and then placing them at Jesus' feet and saying, Lord, I forgive them and I place them at your feet. And then going through a process of praying for them. It's quite liberating. It's quite incredible. Because as Jesus leads us to that, He's given us so much mercy. The final uh, person that, that we, we needed to forgive was ourselves. We are so incredibly uh, self-critical. And that we need to place ourselves at the foot of the cross. The reason why I mention this is because this being the first Friday, we turn to the sacred heart of Jesus. We look to the sacred heart of Jesus and ask Jesus to have mercy on us. That we not be like this present age, that we follow the God of the belly, that we glory in our shame, that our minds are on earthly things. I, I would say those, those things are really describing a lot of what's going on uh, in our age. We've lost focus of God and we've become our own gods. And I think there is a profound conversion even within ourselves. Those who love the Lord. Because you're here. You do love the Lord. But there's always room for conversion. There's always room for transformation. There's always room for repentance. Because if we've stopped seeking God's mercy and asking God's mercy for those who are around us and also giving God's mercy, then we're in trouble. As Jesus gives this, this example of those who are of this world know how to uh, look after themselves. What about the children of light? And so on this first Friday, dedicated to the sacred heart of Jesus, dedicated to God's mercy, I invite you to take some time out today and walk through the people in your life that 
Perhaps you're holding on to a resentment or bitterness. Perhaps you're holding on to something in the past that has a grip on your heart. To take that and to honestly, when you're ready, not beforehand, because uh, sometimes we go like this and then we sneak around the back and grab it again and put it back in. You know, we sort of throw it there and say, okay, well, there it is. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, no one's looking. Mm, got it. When you're ready, just picture Jesus before you and just place it there. Say, Lord, I'm ready to let it go. I'm ready to place it at your feet. What a gift that is. What a tremendous gift that is for freedom's sake. Let's pray for those who are trapped and unable or find themselves unable to do that. That maybe at one point or another, through the grace of the Holy Spirit, that they will be able to. Let's pray. Let us offer our prayers and petitions to God, our loving Father. We pray for a world so in need of justice, peace, reconciliation. We especially pray for persecuted Christians throughout the world, especially those who are experiencing severe persecution, even to the point of death. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the church in her mission to proclaim good news to the ends of the earth, that she will do so in truth, in charity, in great zeal and joy. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our friends south of the border that the Lord will continue to guide, strengthen, and keep focus. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our country, that it may shed the darkness that is upon it, the darkness of anti-life, that all life and the dignity of life will be respected and reflected in our laws from conception till natural death. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our family of parishes, for Our Lady of Sorrows, St. Anne's, Holy Angels, St. Helen's, and St. Mary's, that we may seek first the kingdom of God and not our own will, so that we may obediently follow the will of the Father. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are sick and suffering, especially facing serious illnesses, cancer, other types of illness, and for those who care for them, that the Lord will be with them as their comfort and guide and heal. We pray to the Lord. We pray for vocations to the religious life, the priesthood and the missions, that those who are being called, especially from our family of parishes, will respond to that call in generosity. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the intentions being offered at this Mass, for Rosa and Eugenio Aridio de Meo, and Ida and Giovanni Raposelli, and Tony and Carlo Raposelli. We pray to the Lord. We also pray for the repose of the soul of Giselle Aubrey, uh, mother of Chris, that the Lord will welcome her to the glories of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Loving and merciful Father, our hearts are full of your presence. Help us always to be attentive to your will in our lives. Help us to place at the foot of your Son our burdens, our sorrows, our concerns, and our forgiveness. Help us to cling to the cross so that filled with the Holy Spirit, we may experience the resurrection. 
receive our prayers and grant our petitions according to your will. For we make them in Jesus' name, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth is given in human hands made, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord, and so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald Peter, our Bishop Joseph, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, and all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. And especially remember those family members and friends in this month of November for those who have died. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My food, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
just as the Father, the living Father, sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me shall have life because of me, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that, renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go glorify the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. This being the first Friday, tomorrow is the first Saturday, dedicated to Our Lady. And so, as normal, as our new normal, uh, we have first Saturday Mass at Our Lady of Sorrows in Elmer. Following Mass, we have Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and uh, the availability of the Sacrament of Reconciliation. So, you're encouraged to uh, go tomorrow uh, to Our Lady of Sorrows in Elmer and uh, spend time with the Lord and spend time uh, contemplating the face of Christ as Mary teaches us how to do so. And so uh, you're most welcome. So the Mass is at 8 o'clock and then from 8.30 till 10.30 I think it is or 10 or something like that. I don't know. Till it ends. And then, <laughs> oh, someday I'll get my life together. But uh, uh, you're invited to uh, spend that time in adoration. Again, have a blessed day. I will.